Thursday, April 13th at 6.03 p.m. Uh, with us this evening. Well, I'll just do a motion. Is there a motion to open the hearing? Open motion the to open the hearing. Second. All right, I have a motion on the table. Second. I have a second. All in favor, roll call vote. Mr. Fortin? Yes. Mr. Medeiros? Robert Medeiros, yes. And Dave Devignan, yes. So we are now in open session at uh, 6.03. Um, we have only two items on tonight's agenda. And uh, the first item is the adoption of Board of Health soil removal regulations. Joe, our health agent, will re uh, read the legal ad which was posted in the, was it the advocate, advocate. Joe? Yep. Okay, the advocate. Why don't you go ahead and read that? Um, okay, this was the legal ad. Notice is hereby given under chapter 111, section 31C of the Massachusetts general law that the town of Acushnet Board of Health will consider the adopt adoption of rules and regulations for the control of atmospheric pollution. The proposed regulation entitled soil removal regulation is on file with the town of Acushnet Board of Health and available for inspection during regular business hours. A public hearing on the adoption of the above reference atmospheric pollution regulation has been scheduled for April 13th, 2021, beginning at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Info can be found on the Accushionate website, www.accushionate.ma.us. Um, uh, it was advertised March 25th and April 1st in The Advocate. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Pat, can you screen share and go over the changes from the last time we discussed this? I sure will. Okay. I don't think we need to go through the whole document, just oh. the areas that were changed. I will save you that pain. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and myself. Can you guys see it? Yep. Clear as day. Okay. So I went back and watched the video and <clears throat> the first item that we talked about was the um, threshold of what triggered needing a permit. And there was a lot of discussion that 30 acres was a lot, 50 acres was a lot, even 25 acres. I did a little research and um, I landed at five acres because five acres is still a heck of a lot of land to have open all at one time. And if it's not handled properly, it will cause a dust nuisance. So, um, that was the best place to land. So that's right here on large operations. Um, means any active operation on property which contains five or more acres of disturbed surface area. So if you're gonna move earth around on five acres all at one time, you're gonna need a permit. Um, okay. <clears throat> then uh, Bob had requested that there be a checklist that people knew what to check off but all of these projects require site plan review. So there's a pretty beefy checklist in, in play town-wide anyways for all the departments. So there was no need to be um, redundant with that. The next one was section seven. We did bounce around a little bit, but, um, and the discussion um, for section seven was section seven wasn't it section five for the groundwater yeah it was um, section five excuse me prohibited activity so you wanted you wanted the ability to have some some leeway there so it says no person shall remove from any property soil located within two feet of the spring high water table without approval of the board of health so that gives you the flexibility to um, give a waiver there okay. and the next one was no person shall remove for any property loam or topsoil without approval of the Board of Health. So if someone's doing a job on a site, to, to Bob's comments, and there's a surplus of loam, and they can demonstrate there's a surplus, then the Board of Health can give them permission to take X amount of yards of loam off the site. I so, got a question on that one there, on the two feet? Yeah. <clears throat> it's always been uh, that you have to be four feet above the water table. Yeah, and the discussion uh, was more that this is more about basins, um, retention basins, detention basins, high ground water, and all of the solar fields that are being built. Well, this and, is pertaining to solar fields. Well, it's, it's pertaining to 
for those projects. Your earth removal bylaw for gravel pits covers the four feet. Right. This is a separate Board of Health um, issue. Okay. This right. is the Board of Health. <clears throat> okay, skip it. Go on. Yeah. Go on. So this isn't to remove gravel from a site. This is for working on the site. Okay. Uh, to Dave's comment. So we covered those two issues. And then um, I fixed the abutter notification. Um, Section 9. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I took the language out of the, the planning boards about a notification that the town already has. So um, they're going to um, post a meeting and they're going to provide written notice by certified mail return receipt requested at least 10 days before the scheduled hearing to all certified abutters. And that's how the town covers that. They have a definition of certified abutters. Okay. Uh, yep. So that's, that's how we did that. Um, as such term is defined in 40A11 and proof of notice is required in order to get the permit. That's right out of your, your planning board bylaws. That works for me. And it's, I think it says, uh, certified abutters include people directly across the street yes. because they, they are impacted as well. Yep. Okay. And, uh, that's all the changes. That's it. Mm -hmm. okay, I got a question on backup to, uh, Uh, this is on the second page. Yep. Open storage piles. Yes. And the accumulation of bulk materials, which is not fully enclosed, covered, or chemically stabilized, and which attained the height of three feet or, or more, and total surface area of 150 or more square feet. Now that's like dumping a ten wheeler load on the ground. Now, now what is this for? Is this for uh, building solar panels, or is this for pits, or, or what, what's this for? This is for anyone who's going to stockpile materials on the site. Um, it's not meant to limit the size of the, the pile, Bob. It means that from that size and up, if you're not going to be working on the job, you need to stabilize the pile so it, the wind can't blow the dust off it. So this is basically for a development then, right? Like yeah. a solar farm, a houses or whatever, right? Solar farm, houses, yes. Yep. Okay. Just yeah, Bob, it would, it would have to meet the five acres or 15,000 cubic feet uh, threshold. Otherwise, you know, you having that pile in your backyard. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, you, you know, it's not applicable. Or in your yard, you know, contractor's yard, if he's got 10 piles like that, it, it's not applicable. All right. No, because uh, I see a lot of piles, you know, contractors have piles in the yard, you get extra, sure, sure. you pile it up, and then when you get a chance, you've got to sell it, you sell it, you know? That's got nothing to do with this. Okay, yep. fine. Keep going. <laughs> I just wanted to verify a couple of things. That's yep. all. Yep. No. Nope. Not busting no cookies or anything. I just verify my brain here a little bit. Um, everything, else, everything else remains unchanged. One thing I didn't notice, Pat, the first time, uh, Section Thirteen, Permit Fees. Yes. Thousand dollars per acre. Per, so, dis per disturbed acre. So oh. if it. Is a, if a solar field is clearing 10 acres to do a project, $10, their fee is $10,000? According to this. According to this, it is. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds a little out of whack. So let me, let me explain the reason for it. Okay. And, and it can be whatever you want it to be, Dave. But the reason for this is our, our soil bylaw requires people to work for 300 feet or 600 feet and reclaim work for 600 feet and reclaim and <clears throat> that's not being done in in either of the gravel pits that we have currently and it's an incentive to not leave 50 acres open behind you because you don't want to spend the money to loom and seed it and stop the dust uh, <clears throat> we have a current problem now that we're still getting dust complaints from 72 south main street even though they're not operating because they have so much open area. And um, the minute they have to apply for the permit, 
they're, they're going to scream about it, but it's going to bring them to the table to um, close up some of that some of that area. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, you could cut it in half if you want to cut it in half. But keep in mind, you need to have some money in the kitty to be able to go back out, do enforcement if you need to, do inspections. And there's no fees for inspections or any of those things. So it's wherever you want to land on it. Okay, so are there solar projects that are in the middle of their permitting that could be subject to this bylaw? Yes. Well, okay. only, if, only if DEP turns this around. Quickly. Quickly. And I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking they're going to based on what's been happening with DEP. I mean, we got Senator Montigny and Representative Hendricks sent a letter to DEP on behalf of the town and, and DEP basically said, we'll get back to you. And that was three weeks ago. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess what I'm worried about is let's just say we get a quick turnaround. Uh, what are, what are the acreage? Uh, I'm trying to get a handle on what this means. Uh, the, the, the several solar projects. Well, like what are the acreage? Do you know what they're clearing? Because the smallest is the smallest is 10. It's not what they're clearing. It's what they're disturbing. It could already be cleared. It could be a field. And because they're disturbing it, they're gonna they're gonna pay per acre of disturbed land. But it also makes so your what, seven. What, what what do we depict as the uh, of the disturbed surface? It's not the complete project. In other words, okay, we have ten acres. Are we disturbing all those ten acres every time they do a solar farm? In well, other they, words? they they so, come. <clears throat> so my point is that disturbed would mean that that they're going to be stripping that area uh, down to the two feet, and you know what. What about the areas that they don't do that? I, you know, so if they have 5,000 square feet, you know, you know what I'm saying? So can I just read the definition that's in here of disturbed area? Please right. do. Please do. Yeah. So this is this disturbed surface area. So disturbed, uh, disturbed surface area means a portion of the Earth's surface which has been physically removed, uh, physically moved, uncovered, uncovered, destabilized, or otherwise modified from its original, uh, from its undisturbed natural soil condition, thereby increasing the potential for emissions of fugitive dust. This definition excludes those areas which have been restored to natural state, such that the vegetative ground cover and soil characteristics are similar to the adjacent and nearby natural conditions and B, been paved or otherwise covered by permanent, by permanent structure. C, sustain a vegetative ground cover of at least 70% of the native cover for a particular area for at least 30 days. So it's basically when you're digging it all up, removing the loam, you know, I think so, even. So basically uh, as a solar, area the, that that's what they do so they're going to be disturbing whatever they purchase to do that so that becomes um you know the the thousand dollars per acre and but this, it just but this seems to be a little this, steep it, it may be steep you know um but the purpose of it is that when you're going to do one of these projects you don't necessarily need to just go in and wipe the whole place out they could do a phased project and limit the amount of disturbed area and, and install panels or do whatever they're doing. Yeah, but that, uh, that might work that for a subdivision that they plan on doing in incremental phases. And, you know, but for a solar farm, they're, they're going to clear cut 10 acres right. so that they can then stump 10 acres, then regrade it and, and then get all the helical anchors in there all at once. Yeah. They're not going to want to do it in piecemeal to save a few thousand bucks from the Board of Health. And I, I tend to agree with Tom that I don't sure this, this number might work for 72 Main Street because it makes sense, but it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me to charge a ten thousand dollar permit fee for a solar company um, to review a you know review a plan right. application. But because my point is is that you know that when they go to do a solar project that they're gonna disturb that whole area. 
So if it is 5,000 square feet, it's $5,000, correct? If it's five acres, it's $5,000, right. yeah. Excuse me. Right. So what, what's going to happen is there are some solar farms like this one that's already permitted and time may run out and they may have to reapply because they've already done it once down by the driving range. And on yeah. that, that particular project, there's no land clearing. And I don't even think there's any land disturbance. They're just going to put the helical anchors in the field. So right. let's just say, you know, out of comparison, you know, that farm, that solar farm gets away with basically no permit. And then a guy down the street is going to clear the uh, five acres of land, say five thousand. I don't know. I just don't see it as as fair. Um, Pick a number. It's two different uh, situations. Where I you're agree. We agree. Plan to do to to take out soil or to, you know, comparing it to a, a quarry or, a, or or a place where you're going to be taking out um, gravel or whatever, and where you have a solar farm that's going to be stripping the top soil just to you know basically set their panels and then reconstruct everything so in other words they're not really they're not really taking out that portion of it but they are as far as what i can see through the through the bylaw here um kind of concerns me um because they're basically putting everything back right so, they're going to reseed and restabilize right. so that's kind of concerned of why why they should be why they should be um, part of of that? I don't. I don't know if we should maybe make some changes on you know on that particular type of situation as far as, as solar farms and, and I mean the solar farm has just as much potential for dust. the solar farm has just as much potential for dust. This is about the potential for dust, not about what they're going to put right, back. But it's a potential for dust for a short period of where, okay, they're gonna go strip out and take and turn this thing into a pit or, a, or you know, these other places that are gonna be doing other types of construction. But the but the solar farm thing seems to, you know, where they're gonna strip this out, um, it's gonna be a temporary situation. That's the key, I think, and right there. Temporary versus the long temporary, term. Right, exactly, it's a temporary situation. And then they're gonna put everything back Recede, you know, they already know that they're already, they're already, that's, that, that's the project that they're doing. You know, some of these places that are going to be out soil and, um, you know, stripping the land and, you know, taking out gravel, you know, what are they going to do in the end? That's going to be an open place. I mean, it's just going to be. So let me. What they do, Tom, on, 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 I've been watching a lot of these solar fields. They go into a piece of property, like a piece of farmland. And uh, what they do, if you look at the solar panels, they're all perfectly level. It looks like you set them up with a gun and everything's right even across, everything's straight in a line. So if you have Humpty Dumpty's, you're gonna scrape that property. You're gonna scrape the whole thing down and they're gonna level everything up perfectly level. That's what they're gonna use guns for or levelers. And David, you're an engineer and they're gonna level everything up, put up their panels because every solar farm I've been to, it's not up and down, it's everything in line. Where well, no, my, but my, my point is, is that they're going to go in and if they have 5,000 square feet, they're going to strip it out. They're going to set everything up. They're going to do exactly what you just said, Bob. And yeah. then they're also going to come back and reseed, like, like I was just saying, and, and right. Dave agrees with me. Um, they're going to put that property back or that, that land back to where it was. So in other words, they're going to be paying a permit fee of a thousand dollars per acre and then they put it back to where it was so it's temporary that was my point i think they yeah you most, know, most uh, solar so projects maybe we can maybe we can put something into the to this particular situation here where a temporary thing should be a different fee in other words but the thing is the solar panels are good for what 20 years it's not even that. It's not the. It's not the point of the solar panels. It's it's the point of the situation where it's a temporary situation. It's not. You know what I mean? They're not stripping. They're going to strip the land. They're not going to take out gravel. They're not going down any further than most likely two feet, and then they're going to put everything back. So I don't understand how we could make the fee for them the same as somebody stripping something out to pull gravel. I have a I have a suggestion. 
why don't we have why don't we just incorporate the permit fee we have it written down the permit fee shall be one thousand dollars per acre of disturbed surface areas for long-term projects and 250 dollars per acre for short-term projects in parentheses projects completed and restabilized in less than a year something of that nature so that gives them two growing seasons to hit it either in the spring or the fall and failure, you know, we can put a caveat, failure to um, to stabilize within the year could be subject to you to having to pay the fee all over for a following year. So let me propose this. So the permit fee will be $1,000 an acre of disturbed surface area for projects that are longer than one year in duration? Sure. Okay. And then? This should be subject to the Board of Health decision. Well, let's just get this first and then we can add okay. a few words to it. Projects that are intended to be less than one year the fee is how much 250 per acre so 10 acres would be at twenty five hundred dollars all right <clears throat> and i can move that over to here. What else? Now, now I got a question on that. On that, bit, uh, David. Yep. If the pro intended left than one year, two hundred fifty per acre. Uh, what happens if these guys come in and say they only, they're only going to do a partial? And in that's they would if they, they come would, in and say we're going to work on two acres this year, the fee is only five hundred dollars. You would get separate permits. Why don't you make it so that they, they, they need to get a new permit to, 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 to touch the other area, in other words? So, so you mean, in Tom, that if they're only doing it for one year, $250 for a year. So no, if he opens acre. up two other acres again per acre. per acre. So if he opens up next year two more acres, he's going to have to pay another fee. That's correct. That's the way it's going right. to be, right? That's, yeah. that's okay. what I would I just want to I just want to verify that making yep. sure that you know if you're only going a lot of guys will say well I'll just open it up for that for two years and only pay 500 bucks then next year comes along and say well we already paid the 500 for two no <laughs> you're going to pay for two more years it says that know, there's a lot of shrewd characters around here so you got to think like them they're called but, contractors Bob what's that they're called contractors <laughs> right you were one you know hey, yes, yes. <laughs> No, but that's um that, I think you know that's you're right. Fair. Somebody will try that, Bob, but the bottom line is it's exactly what Pat said we're trying to get them to do. They're like, all right, well, I just wanna I don't wanna pay more than five hundred. I'm not gonna disturb more than two acres. So okay, you only pay five hundred bucks. And then next year they, they they keep it at a minimum. They so they take care of the two acres, they clean it up, they stabilize the loam and seed, they come back in, they say, All right, I got another two acres to go. And then they give you another five hundred. They don't have to pay it all at once. Because they're going to get in trouble if they come in for the whole, say, 10 acres, and they, they don't take care of the 10 acres. The next year, guess what? They're paying, for, they're paying the freight again. And it's not just that. They're going to get a permit for, for, for two acres or five acres. And I'm going to stop by and make sure that that's what they're really doing. Right. And that's the purpose for the fee. Yeah, but you're going to limit it to one year. Yeah, but you're still going to make sure they only open up what they open up and you need to make sure they vegetate it one year or it's so when they come in for a permit and they want to strip out five whatever it is acres it's going to be they're going to have one year to do it yes right and so, so now they have so my point is is that they have 10 acres that they want to do but they're only going to do five acres this year next <laughs> year you come in for a new permit and you pay the fee that's yes. The way it should work yes. so in other yeah. words you're going to work on the the five acres this year we'll get the permit for that 
And when you decide to do the, you know, the balance of the, of the acreage, you come in for a new permit. But they're going to present their whole project to get the permit. They're not going right. to get, but they gonna... need the, So yeah, but they're going to say, okay, we're going to do five acres this year. Right. Yeah. But they're, they're going to present their whole project. But you're right. going to have to put that on this permit we're thing here to... that they're going to have to show their whole project in order to do already it, here. Get, get the break on. It's already here, Bob. And the main, the main purpose of them coming in front of the board of health and paying the money and making smart choices is to minimize the amount of potential dust impact to the neighborhood that they're working on. So right. if, if, you know, at the end of the day, they're going, if they have a 20 acre project and they can come in and they can only do five acres per year then they only do five acres per year and that limits the amount of potential dust issues with the neighborhood. And it'll actually end up saving them some money too. But if they decide that they wanna go at the whole project and permit it out at 20 acres of disturb it and it's gonna take two years, then you know they're gonna pay the big money but because it's gonna be that much more of an effort to maintain and take care of. But getting to the solar fields, <clears throat> none of them take a year. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're up. Four and months all, or less, and they're done. Right. Once they start. So all you want to be sure is that it's, the grass does grow. Yep. And I've seen. Well, but the, the, the point is, is that the $250 fee should only, it will expire in one year. So if, says you right complete, if you haven't completed your project in one year, then you need to come back and reapply for a new permit. In other words, yes. you came and said, okay, I want to do 5,000 square feet. I only did 2,500 and, and, it, and it took a year. Weather permitting, no, no, yes. I, I, it's, this is it. Yes. It's 2,500, you did 2,500, you, yes. you said you were going to do 5,000, yep. didn't come, because that's, that's giving a lot of these contractors, the, and I'm a contractor, but guess what? That's giving them the opportunity to say, ah, geez, I can't, I just don't want to get it done. I don't have the money, blah, whatever. So the next year comes up and they don't have to get a new permit and that stuff's going to sit. So, so my point is, is that per year it's 20, it's, it's the 250 bucks. Uh, Break. You know, right above, you know what I'm saying? it's right giving them. It. Go ahead. Right above it, Tom, it says duration of permit. Every permit granted here on this bylaw shall be valid for a period of not to exceed one year. Okay. So once the permit expires, they have to reapply. We'll get a right. renewal. Right. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. That, that sounds pretty cheap. Two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, David. I agree. Acre, uh, for acre, I mean that's pretty cheap for. Uh, for a solar, solar farm. farm, you can put a lot of panels up in an acre of land in a solar farm, and it's only going to cost them two hundred fifty dollars. That that that's pretty cheap. I like that. Uh, Mr. Hannon says to uh, bring it down to five hundred. Then that sounds a little bit better than a thousand. But the two fifty. Sounds like pretty cheap to me. I, I don't know. So, so you want what do you want to do, do Bob? Like <laughs> I'm not in the solar business, so I, don't, I can't fight the point. You know what I mean? Uh, my point, my point, guys, is that these solar projects are are not underfunded. The money's there. Uh, that's and, right. And there can't well, be tax on the town. The other point. All right. So to, why don't we did? Why don't we make it five hundred? Somebody want to. I'm going to make a motion to make it five per acre. I mean, it's half the price of a thousand dollars per acre. So, I mean, if you got five acres, you know, it's 2,500 bucks. That's, that's cheap money. That's cheap money. And they're going to be making money on that, on the solar farm. There's a motion on the floor. Well, I like to have the discussion before we second on a motion, but, you know, we got three board members here and, and uh, it's good to, discuss things not just let things go and make motions but i i 250 sounds a little cheap to me but 500 a little bit better a thousand sounds a little bit too much you know well, that's why i made the motion of 500. i motion. could say i i could say i'm in five favor of the 500 dollars per acre um i can make that motion a motion is accepted by me of 500 dollars it's up to David if he wants to vote yes or no. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I try and think <laughs> of I try and think of different projects like um, let's just say a subdivision. Um, 
you know, like uh, um, the one that was just built um, by uh, Meniz yep. Construction. Um, you know, I'm just curious as to like how many acres did he have to clear to make that happen? And he, he's already paid a ton of money through planning board. And of course, when you're building a road, you're gonna clear, you know, the way all the way up. You don't have to land clear the whole thing. So it keeps the incentive to not clear cut the whole parcel. Um, I guess, you know, that it, it, it seeks the goal of, the goal is to limit how, how much they clear cut all at once. So if he does the road and the uh, drainage pond and that kind of thing, it would limit his permitting costs with us. So that makes sense, I guess. I'm just trying to rationalize it, you know? Yeah, because then, you, you, you're, you're limiting acreage when they're doing that, Dave. So they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need to out. think it through. That's all. So then if he goes yeah. in, he does one lot at a time. Right. And it's a half acre, he's clear, and he doesn't need a permit from us. Right. Because, exactly. okay. All right. All right. I'm okay with the 500 then. That's the whole intent is that they just right. don't come in and make a big open site. What, got I, I've got a question too. The, now, do they, uh, these people that own these solar farms, do they pay taxes on these panels and stuff? They pay personal property tax, yeah. But each panel there is in it? They pay the property tax. They they pay the personal property tax. They pay the landowner for having it there. And they still make money. But does the town make revenue out of this? Yeah, they do. That's yes, no yes. They, it's no that's growth. all I'm caring about, if the town's going to make revenue out of it, you know? Yeah. All right, 500 Because is... if the town don't get any revenue, nobody's going to get paid. All right, my motion stands for 500 Second. Uh, all right. There's a motion for 500. Second on on the table. Uh, all in favor? Aye. On a roll call vote, Mr. Borden. Aye. Mr. Medeiros. Robert Medeiros. Aye. And I'm an aye. So that's a change that we agreed to. If that's all the changes, I think, I think if anybody has nothing else to add, we can vote on the document as a whole. I'll make it. I'll make a motion to accept the document with that particular change, as written. Okay. Second, yes. There's a second. Uh, a motion made, seconded. A roll call vote. All in favor of Mr. Fortin? Yes. Mr. Medeiros? Robert Medeiros, yes. And I'm a yes. So that passes unanimously. And they're now effective. Uh, go, oh, subject to the DEP approval. Well, there are there are some parts of the permit permit that are not about air quality. Okay. And, and Jeff Blake is going to find out if those become effective in 14 days. Okay. Yeah, and right, keep us, I, keep I also I did get a text message from Representative Hendricks yesterday that he was working on DEP and the DEP is waiting for this and that we're going to get attention. So we'll see. Okay, good. All right, Dr. So, Mr. Hendricks, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, good night. Have fun with the tobacco regulations. Yeah, thanks. Matt, that'll be easy. All right. So next on our agenda. Well, I got to unshare my screen and get out of here somehow. Okay. There it is. So next on the agenda, we have tobacco regulations. These are, well, some of them we have to adopt uh, based upon state regulations uh, to just basically update our regulations. And then there are a bunch of options and I think in your packet, gentlemen, the yeah, is it the green? The, the green is are optional, and the yellow are copied from, from the latest state law and DPH regulations. So, the rest of anything that's not yellow or green, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, is already in. That is our regulations, correct? Um, not entirely. No. No. Okay. So our reg our regulations were more around when they were banned from the restaurants. That's the reason that for the update. When cig cigarette smoke was banned from the restaurants, they were banned, banned from the vending machine. It's a, it's a very old antiquated uh, regulation that all of the towns adopted at that particular time, which was started out in the early 90s. We've modified it a little bit as time has gone on based on state laws, such as the age being changed to 21, but realistically, after the um, past couple of years in state law being changed, it is completely antiquated at this point. Okay. So anything in yellow, we're supposed to adopt. And 
So anything on the document that's not highlighted or yellow, we should be adopting. But I, I have an issue with with the uh, the yellow highlighted areas for where it talks about the fines that are state listed fines. Yeah. Why do we have to adopt something that we're not going to be doing? I don't, I don't think we have to adopt the fines. I think I think the uh, the local communities can um, propose their own fines like we have. Definitely Correct. Favor, uh, and in fact, I'm trying to find it in here somewhere. It's uh, on page page 12. That's why I'm asking because it's highlighted as yellow. Like, uh, okay, that's what the state finds, but I have no interest in finding people like that. Right. That's what it's, they find, but we we have. Uh, I don't know. So, so as if I go ahead, go ahead, I'm talking to um, the people that. Um, came up with this which is part of dph um as they've explained that to me is that that is now currently the state law um is those fines and if we're going to find that is the minimum we can make them larger but we can't find smaller in the event that we're doing you know doing our local um compliance checks so, so there's, so there's something to, to find what the state is saying, um, you know, up to $1,000 on the third fine through the state. I mean, I yeah, thought so that the mass was, law that changed that updated this to both 21 years old and modified the whole state tobacco law created this. This was adopted by Massachusetts and voted on to modify it. And that in turn created the situation that we're in. It's not anything that the, the town has done. This is something that was created by the state law. We can't find less. So the first fine is $1,000, correct? Yes. Yep. That the state has regulated. So if I read this correctly, Joe, that was left up to the. I thought that was left up to the local boards it, to make. It, it used to be. But why is it listed it below, where it says for violations of all other sections, specific to city or town, the violator shall receive, in the case of first violation, a fine of one hundred dollars. Yes. So those fines, uh, those fines, are connected to the green. So because of the things that you can add into the regulation beyond what's here, you can put your own fining system in place based on if they do not comply with the green. All the rest of the stuff is taken from the state law. Okay, so if you go into a store and you witness the sale to an, a minor and, and you find them, <laughs> you are obligated to find them $1,000 plus $100 if I'm reading this correctly? <laughs> Not a hundred. No, the, it would be the, it would be the $1,000 because it was the sale, not necessarily to a minor these days, but somebody um, below the age of 21. Okay. But the green portions in here is where the $100 fines would be connected. So if um, I, I would looking back like a non-residential roll your own machine, which happens to be there, if they sold, if you adopted the green section, it would be a non-residential roll your own machine sold to a minor, then that would be potentially a thousand dollar fine and a one hundred dollar fine. Jesus. Are you saying you saying that we have, do we have a choice? I don't. I don't. I, this these these numbers are so they're so unrealistic. It's outrageous. Yes, I mean, it's talking about the soil board, the soils for uh, you know solar a thousand dollars. We brought it down to five, and for guys smoking a package of cigarettes, one smoke, you're going to find a thousand dollars. I know it's just outrageous. I, I don't. I don't have any. My my my, well, my thing with this is David. That, you're going to find. You're going to find. You're going to find a. a, a you know, a real tailor, a store, a thousand dollars. Why don't you just put them out of business? 
You know, this yeah. is ridiculous. I, I, I thought that we were in the situation where we would be placing, keeping the fines at the $100, just like it states in the, in the you know, first violation like we've done. But what Joe's saying is that, no, we're our first violation. So you, you, somebody sells a pack of cigarettes to somebody under 21, they're going to be fined $1,000. That's a thousand dollar fine. That's my, that's my argument. So the state this. has imposed. David, wait a minute, Tom, Tom. Wait no, wait a minute. I, let me finish. One, I time, guys, one at a time. So the state has imposed that we are going to find somebody for selling someone a pack. No, everybody makes mistakes. You know, I've gone through this with, with people and I know people that have owned all of these properties and stores in this town. And if you go find somebody a thousand bucks for Jeez. selling them a pack of cigarettes, and uh, so they had a fake idea, whatever it is, and uh, somebody makes a mistake. I've seen it happen a hundred times in this town. It's Jeez. it's ridiculous. It is. This is not going to stop people from smoking. It's not going to stop people from selling cigarettes. And it's it's ridiculous. It's not going to stop minors from getting cigarettes. A thousand dollar fine would kill a store right now. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, listen, I mean, again, this is this is something that the state modified. This is not something that we did, that the town did. It was something that the state went through and changed the entire tobacco laws. We don't um, have to put it. That, that's fine. We don't have to put it in our regulations as far as I'm concerned. I want to strike that whole section. I don't care to put it in our regs. I don't give a hoop what the town, what the state Yep. You know what they want to do. I don't want it in my. I don't want my name on it because I think it's outrageous. And it's like Tommy said, a pack of cigarettes. Oh. You're going to try and put somebody out of business. You know? what I can you know, do. Can I, I've can seen. I, my, can I, the thing is, is that say I, real quick. I have. I had family in the business and had several people make mistakes. Yeah. Saying, okay, yeah, that that. Okay, now you have to cut everybody. So they caught them. Guy's got a fake ID. You look at it, it says, yep, he's 21 years old. And he looks like he's 25 or six. It, you can make this simple mistake. It, it, and unfortunately, they go in and do these types of, uh, you know, uh, tests or whatever they do to go into these places and, and you know, put them on the spot. And they're going to they're gonna bang them for a thousand bucks. Yeah. You put the place out of business for a thousand dollars. People are and I totally disagree with this section, like I like Dave does, and I, I don't want to put it in there. I don't care. So not only Dave, my myself, my theory is, you know, I'm a veteran, Ridiculous. and if a soldier comes in, we say from my rack, he's been busted up, you know, seen action and the whole works, and he decides he's not 21 and he wants a package of cigarettes. He can't go buy it. He's serving the country risking his life for people to be free here. And this guy can't even buy a package of cigarettes and he's only 20 years old. That's bull crap. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna find somebody a thousand dollars to a veteran that, that wants to have a smoke because he just come back from Iraq and get busted up or Vietnam or wherever, wherever he have may have been. That's wrong, Dave and Tom. I, I'm, I'm really truly against that, you know, and a thousand dollars to a store, come on, be realistic, will you? Well, it gets, the, it gets the worse. Bakes is being unrealistic. It gets it gets worse because it goes to two thousand, then it's five thousand. You why don't why don't you just close up your doors? I, I just <laughs> can't I can't go along with this. I don't I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to adopt anything. Can we strike that out? Like Dave says, can we strike it out? Okay, can we strike I mean, anything we want can out. We, can we just charge like we used to before? If the first offense was what was it, fifty, a hundred dollars, Tom? It's a hundred and two and three, whatever. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, when we first came green. about this thing, it, it was uh, you know a hundred bucks, and I know that you know some people paid the hundred dollars maybe once or twice, and they were older people, and they make mistakes. We all make mistakes. If we didn't, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? We all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, don't we? Absolutely. You know. So what that's why we got erases on pencils to erase the mistake and correct it. I don't. We don't really have to vote on this right now. Um, I know you probably want to get this behind you, but I really don't feel comfortable 
voting unless we can make a decision regarding um, the fining situation. We have to make sure that we can make that change and we don't have to adopt that. Um, I, I, I like to keep our own. I'd, just, just I'd rather put it on. I'd rather put it on. I'd rather keep it on file and and make the decision at a future meeting. That's. I'll make that motion. Second that motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and second. Uh, any further discussion? If I might. So, go ahead, Joe. Quickly, there's there's the the, the group of people that you know, as part of our tobacco coalition that I certainly could, you know, invite to a meeting um, where you could all discuss that with them. They're the ones that are, you know, a lot more knowledgeable about all of the state regulations that just came and maybe answer some of your questions a little bit better than maybe I can, um, rather than being a third party. Uh, if that's something you'd be interested in, I wouldn't mind doing that at some future meeting. Yeah. In, in a late in you know later on there's so many things that are going on in in the world in the community and in, in especially within the board of health with covid and all this other stuff that are, you know I, I just can't understand how they can try to impose all of this stuff it seems like they're trying to sneak things under the rug that's my <laughs> point and, and and i don't i don't agree with it at all um totally disagree with it uh, I don't know why they're trying to do things like this. It's ridiculous. You know, you've got people struggling in the world and struggling in business, and you're trying to impose fees and fines like this. It's ridiculous. The only uh, concern I have with not doing anything at this time is, and I don't know if you know the answer or not, Joe, is there anything in here that uh, our regulations are too soft on now that, for instance, um, that our regulations don't cover which means that it can be sold in our town and it's and it's basically illegal in other parts of this well, every, throughout the state. Is there anything that we should, or is back, or there- Dave, excuse me, I, I lost ahead. you for a second. Can you back up? Sure, so the question I have is, um, if there are things in here that we need to adopt, is it because there are there are some areas of the state where it's allowed and some areas it's not and we have the option or is it, uh, if it's prohibited by the state, do we really need to put every single word in our simple little tobacco regulation? If it's already prohibited, that means the stores can't sell certain products because it's prohibited by the state, correct? correct? So we're not doing any harm by not acting on some of this foolishness that I see on paper. Correct. Okay. I feel better about it. I mean, that's really the question I want you to research in the future is, is there something that is slipping by the cracks in our town because we didn't implement something? Otherwise, if it's already prohibited and the stores know it and they can't sell it, and they don't sell it, and there's really no harm, no foul going on outside of some, a, a whole pile of paperwork to, you know, put on our wall, you know, to say that we're we're do-gooders when everybody's doing the right thing anyway, what are we doing? That's that's my point. It just seems like a whole lot of paperwork for nothing. Yeah, I mean at this maybe point, I'm off base. Not... If I'm off base, please let me know. <laughs> no, you're no. I was just going to say you're not far from the truth. The reality is really just op updating older regulations to match up with what's going going on currently. It's up, you know. Definitely, it's 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 a tough spot that you guys are in and it's definitely a review pot process to go through to make sure you get it the way that you guys want it there's no doubt but ultimately you know we can have like i said have somebody yes at this point you're covered the town is covered in regards to what is going on because of the way the state law changed and they're required to be uh, licensed by the town, they're required to be licensed by the state, and they're, you're obviously required federally to follow the federal regulation. This is the same issues that we've run into town before, where we have absolutely, there's a federal law in place about tobacco sales, and we have absolutely no control over when the feds come in and do compliance checks, and their whole set of fining, which is re way higher than the state is. And this is kind of the same kind of thing that happened with the state with the new law. 
it's there. They're required to be licensed by everybody and they're, they're required to be overseen by the federal, the state, and the local people. The local regulations can be above and beyond what the state is. There's no doubt about it. That's the purpose of the green. But do we have to update anything right now? Absolutely not. Okay. You know, it's something that needs to be done as time goes on, but it doesn't, it, it's better off to be a well thought out, um, you know, regulation. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to postpone any decision until a future date. Correct. And that was a second. Roll call vote. All in favor, Mr. Fortin? Aye. Mr. Medeiros? Rob Medeiros, aye. And I'm a yes, so the matter is basically tabled for the foreseeable future. Um, with that, Joe, is there anything else that is unexpected that you wanted to discuss? Um, can... Not at the moment, no. Okay, there's nothing else on the agenda, so it might, might be illegal to do it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take a motion to adjourn at this point. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, roll call vote, Mr. Fortin? Aye. Mr. Medeiros? Aye. I'm an aye, so unanimous. We're now adjourned at 6.54. Good night, gentlemen. Good night.